بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على حبيبه المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه الشرفاء أما بعد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله We are continuing with our training inshallah ta'ala on how to have a successful marriage life so that inshallah our young men and women who want to get married they are well equipped inshallah to deal with the responsibilities and challenges and difficulties and problems in front of them and understanding what is marriage, what are the benefits, what are the rights, how do I go about when I'm faced with problems, how do I deal with problems. A lot of marriages are breaking down and because one of the contributing factor is that they do not know what they're putting themselves into, not understanding what are the responsibilities and not understanding what are the rights on one another and how to bring those children correctly and how to discharge their duties. Therefore, inshallah, on part number 24, it is also significant part, two parts that have gone. We have spoken, inshallah, we've looked on how to resolve marriage problems. This is a very significant portion of this training in how to resolve problems when you are faced with problems in your marriage, how to resolve it. Um, therefore, there are very important tips, inshallah ta'ala, that we are going to, um, uh, to tell you, bi'idhnillah, on how to help one another when uh, you are faced with uh, problems, challenges, difficulties, um, problems in the marriage, inshallah. First and foremost, um, um, uh, we have to understand, as we said in the previous um, episodes, inshallah, that life itself, is full of challenges. One day you're happy, the next day you're sad. One day you're healthy, the next day you are sick. One day you're wealthy, the next day you're poor. One day you are, you're so happy in your marriage, the next day you're facing problems. This is the nature of life. This is the nature of life on this earth. A comfortable life where there's no death, no financial problems, no marriage breakdowns, no death, no all this is the life after here. That is the perfect life. Do not demand a perfect life in an imperfect world uh, where is not meant. We are not meant to, 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 to be living a perfect life. It is not the place for it. Therefore, as Muslims, we believe the perfect life is the life of after here that we should work together and work very hard to please our maker, inshallah, so that we can have, have a comfortable, happy life in the hereafter. Uh, once you understand that this life, everyone do have challenges, problems financially, problems in their marriages, problems in their health, problems with their children and everything, therefore it is easier to deal with. <clears throat> therefore, first and foremost, when you are faced with a problem and difficulties and challenges, the first solution is to sit down together. A husband and wife should sit down together, talk about the problem, to find a solution. Otherwise, <coughs> holding things in your heart and holding another one and holding another one and holding another one, it will lead to come a day where you are ready to explode and throw everything and that's it. There is no way back. While the problem is small, resolve that problem and let the journey of your marriage, inshallah, marriage life, move on. Therefore, <clears throat> one of the most important thing when you sit to talk to one another <coughs> is that you need to listen to one another. Give one another a chance to speak. You as the man, as the husband, sit and listen to your wife's concerns because she might be right in that particular thing where you think that you are the right one in that particular argument. She might be right. She might have a point. She might be very stressed for so long. Therefore, just sit, give her a chance, talk about it and say, sorry, I did not know that you are feeling this way. 
I didn't know that things were this bad. Therefore, let me correct myself. So, inshallah, I will correct myself. I will take an action to do this and this and that. And you as the wife, very important also, sit together instead of shouting, swearing, crying and all this. Sit and talk through your problems. Inshallah, because you love one another, you want the best for your marriage, you've invested so much, you share children with one another, and this marriage, you look at it as ibadah, um, protecting each other from committing major sins of zina. Therefore, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you solutions. Secondly, when you do sit together to resolve those marriage problems and issues and difficulties and challenges, there are some rules that you should follow. First and foremost, sit only between yourselves. Do not allow your neighbors to sit with you and resolve it. Do not allow your families to sit with you, your children to get involved and others. The problems by involving others becomes bigger and bigger. Sit down between you and your, your husband and, uh, and the wife to try to resolve those problems. It might be easy to resolve hugging one another, kissing one another, talking about it and everything, finishing, forgiving one another and that's it. Khalas, finished. But... If you do involve others, the problem is going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and it might end up uh, being so big that you cannot control it anymore. Secondly, when you decide to sit to resolve your differences and problems, make sure you avoid being angry. It is so dangerous being angry in that particular time. Stay with respect. If you are anger, um, angry with each other, problems, faced problems and everything, cool down, relax, take times, and then, then is when you should sit. Not now. Now we sit and talk about it and everything. Why everyone is angry, the shaitan is involved and everything. That is not how to do it. Take time, let everyone relax, let the minds come down and everything, let the dust settle, and then now you should start talking about it. Start looking um, uh, for solution. One of the most important thing, one of the most important rules we said, when you, um, you, you, you've decided to look for solutions, is listen to one another and allow one another to speak. Because sometimes the husband just, as soon as you say one thing, he wants to tell you, say a hundred things. And the wife similarly. And you just want to answer for every, no. Let one speak until they finish and then listen, listening. And then you speak also until you finish. And that is when you know the whole story. You know how each one of you feels. And therefore, instead of um, uh, running to cry and um, uh, shout at one another and everything. Um, uh, then uh, rule number four. Um, condition number four, it is very important when you're trying to resolve a problems, try to find options and solutions, more than one solutions. Do not corner somebody and tell them, look, there's a problem between me and your mother, choose between me or your mother, or otherwise I'm gone. No, that is not how to do it. Your yeah, mother is a mother. She's special. She, she's good carried him for nine months and given birth and take care, care of him, um, um, uh, to, taught him and everything until he's ready to marry you. You should not corner him and give him a very narrow option of either me or your, 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 your mother. No. Alhamdulillah, you are more than three, four, five of you. Why should we not speak to your other brothers and sisters that they spend some time together um, uh, with their mother and try to find solutions instead of cornering one another. And also, one of the most important thing is that time is very important. They say time is a healer. Do not demand the solutions now and now only. It has to be now or never. No, that is not how to do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was creating all the heavens and the earth, he could have said, kun fayakun, be, and it would have been there and then. He has taken six days. Why? To teach us that, take things slowly, 
take nicely and everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have done it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's done it over six to, um, uh, until the, the seven days, everything was complete. Therefore, when you are really looking for solutions, allow each other times. Okay? If you do not do this and that now and now, that said tomorrow you'll see me divorcing you. Probably you went and married your wife. She was never praying in her life. And now you brought her uh, something. And you tell her, if you do not from today pray five times a day, tomorrow you're divorced. Probably she'll start today three. And then after a few days, four. And then five. And then she'll never leave the salat. Do not tell her, now because I go to work at six o'clock. You must wake up at six o'clock to get some food ready for me um, uh, to work. Otherwise, um, uh, I am struggling. No, because probably for the last 20 years, 25 years at home, she wakes up at eight. It will take a bit of time to adjust certain things. So once you do get solutions, everyone should be ready to work on the things that you've agreed to make sure you are not um, causing hurt to each other's feelings and problems, disrespecting one another, that is not how to do it. One of the biggest enemy in marriage life is anger. And anger, the Prophet ﷺ said, is from shaitan. And shaitan has been created by fire. And fire, you put it off with water, the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, if one of you was angry, he should perform wudu. Insha'Allah, we will take a small little time uh, to talk about anger management. It is extremely important managing your anger when you are having problems and uh, difficulties in your marriage. Uh, do not, do not make solutions when you are angry. Do not talk to one another when you are both angry. You're just going to make things worse, not better. Therefore, they say a coffee or tea will only burn you when it is so hot. But if you allow it time to settle, um, uh, to cool down, therefore, then you can drink all of it even if you, if you want at once. And similarly, if you have charcoals and if you have fire, you cannot touch when it is hot. But if you leave it for a day or two, and then you come, it will be the same fire. You can hold it because it's ashes now. It is so cool. You can hold it, do whatever you want with it. But if you touch it when it is so hot, it's going to burn you. So similarly, when your husband is so hot, overtaken by shaitan, so angry, now if you start uh, engaging with him at that particular time and increase him to be even more angry, therefore it's going to burn you. It might end up in divorce. A lot of divorces have taken place because of anger. Therefore, first and foremost, how to deal with anger is the Prophet ﷺ um, uh, has taught us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has taught us, Ista'idh billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim I seek refuge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me from shaytan. Therefore, first and foremost, when you have faced that problem, knowing that anger is from shaitan, therefore say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even told us in the Quran, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغُنْ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ When a problem and shaitan start pushing you to do things and everything, run and seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. Secondly, According to the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, when you are so angry, um, therefore, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, has taught us is change your posture. If you are standing, sit down. You have less chance to beat somebody when you're seated than when you are ready to go and attack them while you're standing. If you are sitting and you're still not managing to resolve it, sleep. Therefore, um, uh, they say, um, uh, by changing that, it calms things down. That is the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. Number three in resolving your difficulties, um, your anger, تَوَضَّأُ وَاغْتَسِلْ بِمَاءٍ بَارِدٍ Do perform wudu. 
Allah said, shaitan is made of fire and fire you put it off with water. If one of you is so angry, put, go and have shower, a cool shower. They say when you are angry, you release adrenaline, the heart beats so fast and the body becomes so warm. Um, therefore, go and have a cold, not a very cold, a warm shower, go perform wudu, probably pray to raka'ah, do something else for a, for a bit, let your mind come down, therefore then, um, but, and also rule number four, very, very important in controlling your anger, do not speak while you're angry. Do not make decisions while you're angry. You will swear, you will hurt people's feelings, you might end up divorcing. A lot of houses have collapsed, a lot of marriages, because when you were overtaken by shaitan, you've taken the decisions. The shaitan was taking decisions for you. And the shaitan is never happy for us to have a happy marriage, comfortable life, comfortable life. Because if there is a marriage breakdown, you might end up, it is easier for you to go and commit zina. It is easier for the wife to go and commit zina. It is easier for the children to be misplaced. Um, so is for and uh, misled um, because you're not together to help one another in uh, bringing them um, so the shaitan overtakes now to destroy um, the, the husband to destroy the wife to destroy the children therefore uh, uh, for example uh, somebody while they were so angry the wife also came and she also pushed her luck with anger said if you are man enough Divorce me now. Said, okay, then I've divorced you. Said, you've shown me you're a man. Give me the second talaq now if you're truthful with your words. He said, I've given you the second one. Said, no, now show me if you're man enough. Finish it off so that we never ever see one, uh, one another again. Said, okay, I've given you the third one. Go away. Get away out of uh, my, my way. And that said, once the dust settled, second day, and the husband came down, he started crying. What have I done to my wife? What have I done to destroy my children? Running to this sheikh, running to that sheikh, running to this one. Um, I want my wife now. I was so angry and all this and that. And everything, you've already destroyed your home. Therefore, if you followed these rules that we're telling you in managing your anger, you would not have caused all that problem. And number five, it is very important um, is that swallow your anger and pride when you're so angry do not when you're faced with problems difficulties and challenges swallow your anger do not allow they say um, it is like a relationship between a control um, a remote control and the tv Rem you remain the remote control let the shaitan be the tv otherwise if the shaitan changes that and make you the TV and the shaitan get hold of the remote, he can change you however he wants. Because the remote, it is so little, but can change a huge thing like um, a, TV, a television. Therefore, beat her, beat her, you're going to start beating her. Swear at her, you're going to swear at her. Um, divorce her, um, you're going to divorce her. And that said, when shaitan will go away, and now you've destroyed your home, the Prophet ﷺ, Hadith reported by Sayyidina Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu arda. He said, the strong one is not one who will beat this one, beat that one. A strong person is somebody. Innama shadidu alladhi yamliku nafsahu inda al-ghadabi. A true strong person is someone who controls themselves when they are angry. When they are angry, remain in control. Do not allow shaitan to control you. You will destroy a lot of things and then you will definitely later come to regret and it might be too late. Therefore, uh, a person, a sahaba, a companion of the Prophet ﷺ came to the Prophet ﷺ, said, Awsini ya Rasulullah, give me wasiya ya Rasulullah, qala la taghdab. The Prophet ﷺ has given him only one word. He said, do not be angry because anger destroys a lot of things. How many people have killed each other? because of anger. How many key people have divorced? Um, uh, how many couples have divorced because of anger? Therefore, very important. And another advice, inshallah, in how to deal 
on how to resolve your marriage issues and difficulties. لا تذكر الخلافات القديمة. Never ever dig down to bring the previous problems. Probably because you get some couples and some um, men will tell you, I remember 15 years ago you started doing this. You've done this and that last time. Three, four years ago you've done You do not dig other problems. Deal with this one and finish with this one. Others have died and finished. Do not dig them out of the grave. You're going to make the problem even bigger and bigger because you, those problems were resolved. You have forgiven each other. You've enjoyed life. You've continued. Do not go back and look for them to support this argument. No. Let them go. Once it's finished, they say, الزواج يحتاج إلى محات Marriages requires to have rubbers. Rub and finish. If you've written something, you've rubbed it off. You will not be able to read it. You might not even remember. Therefore, rub the problems that you've gone. Use the rubber and wipe it off. Move forward. Wipe it off. Move forward. That is how. And also, لا تعمم do not generalize. Very, very important. Do not generalize. You found a problem with your wife. Deal with it as your wife. I know all your sisters are like this. Even your mother is like this. They do have... No, do not generalize. Not every human being is the same. Two sisters, one might be very righteous. The other one might be very bad. Therefore, um, do not generalize altogether. And say, you never ever give me any money. You're always like this. Do not do that. Remember the, the, how many times your man, um, uh, your, your husband has done this and that and everything. Um, um, therefore, um, uh, you never tell the truth. Do not generalize. Only now that I have not told the truth. But do not, you are always, you are a big liar. You always lie. No, do not generalize. Only specific problems deal with it now. Generalizing causes a lot of problems. Therefore, uh, one of the most important advice also in dealing with headaches and problems and challenges and difficulties in your marriage, التعايشو مع المشكلة Knowing how to learn, um, uh, how to live with a problem. Certain times, your husband is bakhil probably, stingy. Then probably your husband just gets angry very quickly. Your wife probably similarly is slightly loud. Huh? No matter how many times you told her, this, there's a certain things you cannot change. You just need to know how to live with it. Okay? Your husband gets angry very quickly. For the last 30, 40 years, it's been happening. Do not expect it to just disappear. It is in her nature I'm sorry, in his nature and everything. Therefore, we just need to learn sometimes how to be patient. If you do understand that this is the weakness of my husband, just be patient and understand one another and deal with it and move forward with it. Alhamdulillah, we have spoken about how to deal with marriage problems. Inshallah, if we follow these steps, what to do? What not to do when you are faced with problems? If we follow the sunnas of the Prophet Sallam, how to deal with anger, um, and um, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save a lot of our marriages. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us strength in dealing with problems and difficulties and challenges when we are facing. If you know how to do it, it is easy to do it. If you do not know, and you're just trying this and trying that uh, trial and error, you'll make a lot of errors, and then, then it's going to be sometimes too late. Inshallah, that is why we're doing these kind of courses. Inshallah, to help one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this life and the hereafter. Wa sallallahu ala sallina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. ربنا انفعنا بما علمتنا رب علمنا الذي ينفعنا رب فاقهنا وفاقه أهلنا وقرابات لنا في ديننا